Just today, I want to try that again. I'm going to give you another chance, okay? Good morning, the storehouse. Good morning. And so I'm so grateful you guys came out today. And for all that are on Facebook, we're so grateful. As you can see, we have our uh, kids' church here today, Rev Kids. And they are joyfully going to share with you the gift of Christmas through song. And so if you will just... Um, this is interactive, by the way. I'm going to tell y'all. It involves you moving, so you're going to stand. You're not just going to listen, but you're going to get involved, okay? If I can get involved at my age, you can get involved at yours, okay? So let's just worship the Lord with everything we have in us today, because today is a day that the storehouse as a family worships the King of Kings, the gift of Jesus in Christmas. Amen? Amen. Yeah. 
to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne, and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. In congregation, said amen. 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 Silent night.
that someone showed me the true reason for Christmas. Yes. Today God wants to pour into you a gift. He wants to give you that freedom to worship Him today. He wants to give you that heart to worship Him today. But first you need to forgive Him for the things He allowed into your life. And then you need to forgive yourself.
Redeemer, our Savior, the soon coming King. We worship you today, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, we worship you, Lord. Thank you. 
Well, good morning, Storehouse. Amen. Kind of half, yeah, y'all have half calf this morning. You're almost there. Let's try that again. If you love the Lord, say amen. Well, you guys are good. It's the Sunday before Christmas. Merry Christmas. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're the best looking believer I've seen today. All right, we got a couple things to do today. Where did our microphones go? Like the wireless mics. Did we take it with us? Stop taking the microphones. Come on down. Hey, since you have the microphone, how would you like to? No. <laughs> Man, we got some stuff to do this morning, so are you ready? Say, let's go. Let's go. All right, we're going to get into, before we get into the Word this morning, I want to update you on some things that you, I'm getting a little bit of feedback on this, or it could just be the echo in my hollow hands, one or the other. Um, I want to update you on some things that you had a part in. Say, I had a part. I had a part. In changing people's lives. Changing people's lives. I know what we do things like take up collections and do things, but sometimes we need to know what was the impact, amen? amen. So our community coordinator, Miss Rachel, is going to come up this morning up front. Give us an update on. So come on up here. She's going to give us an update this morning on the collections we took for her clients and the nursing home, which is the assisted living facility, and the women's shelter, correct? Yes. And we have uh, three pictures up there for you when you're ready to go. Go. It is nice up here. Is this on? Oh, yeah. Good, time, baby. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, guys. Y'all are awesome. So this is what we did. Um, whew, I'm just blown away, really. Can I share something before I tell you exactly what we did? Sure. So um, right after Thanksgiving, um, my, my flesh came in, and I was very worried. I'm like, oh, no, what are we going to do? Are we going to have enough presents? Are we going to have enough gifts for these families and a shelter? And I was feeling a little overwhelmed. <laughs> and then Pastor last week was 
that sermon was just totally for me, um, that I need to just give it to God, not take it back. He's all in control, and he, he's got it, and not be all wrapped up in the traditions and just worried about the gifts, because Jesus is the gift. Yes, he that is, he is our gift. Yes. Well, all of us came together, and we were able to serve eight families of my caseload, which is 19 children, wow. received presents. Thank you, guys. And then we were able to get five children from the Domestic Violence Women's Shelter. One of them was able to get a bicycle. You guys are awesome. And then we were able to get enough donations for um, the assisted living facility. We've got yes. books, arts and crafts, women devotional. Uh, there's a family devotional. There's a bunch of stuff that we were able to get. And it was all possible because of you guys. So thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Miss Rachel, how many families was that again? In total? Yep. 24 children in total received presents, eight families plus the five children and then the assisted living. Hallelujah. I say we have about 10 books, books about 10 books with arts yeah. and crafts and devotions. Good. Give yourself a hand. You guys did all that? So I just want to say that I think you're amazing. And I love the generosity of this church, and I love how you guys come together when there's a legitimate need, and you step up your game. So that was the that was the 5,000 foot view of what we've done specifically with the collections we've taken. But I want to back out to about 30,000 feet and show you another view of something that you have participated in that you may not even know about. But we support a ministry here in Central Florida called Christian Help. They do a couple of things really, really well. They have an amazing food bank that our sister Marcia works at about three or four days a week. And uh, she is, uh, everyone there knows Marcia. I'll say, oh, are you in the food bank? And they'll say, yeah. And I say, oh, we have one of our congregants who works in the food bank. I say, Miss Marcia, oh, we love her. That's the standard response. And who doesn't love Miss Marcia? So, right? So they have this amazing food bank, but they also have this entire administrative sign side that helps people um, learn how to write a resume, learn how to do a job interview, learn how to dress for an interview, go to job interviews, look for jobs online, and they do five job fairs a year in the Central Florida Fairgrounds. And I've prayed, I've, I'm at the prayer table praying over people to get work, and never have I seen less than 80 employers on site ready to hire people who can start tomorrow. So if you're looking for a job, there is no reason to not be working. True. True. Sorry. <laughs> 80, 90, I've been there where there was 110 employers who were ready to sign you up today to work tomorrow. So they do that really well. But the greatest, one of the greatest things we get to participate in, because we support them financially every month, is what they call Operation Christmas Blessing. They gather toys around the Central Florida area from businesses, corporations, small business corporations, and churches. It started out in their conference room at 1,000 square feet. I've worked it two years. The two years I've been there, it has been moved to Willow Creek Church in a gymnasium that has two full basketball courts. Wow. Can we pull up picture number one? So that's what you see when you walk in. Picture number two gives you a scope of how big this is. It's two full-size basketball courts. Now, here's what's really cool. Along the way, many years ago, FedEx says, you know what? We'll help you pick up the toys so you guys don't have to run around and start picking up toys. So the first year, it was a small FedEx truck, and then several years later, it was a FedEx semi-truck, and then a couple years, just two years ago, it was a FedEx semi-truck and another small FedEx truck, and this year, it was two solidly packed FedEx full-size semi-tractor trailers. So let's walk through. So that's the scope of how big this is. It's ginormous. I love that word. It's just amazing. So what they do here is they send out an email to their clientele who can sign up for free, say free, Christmas gifts for their children. Now, let me tell you something I learned as we walk through this real quick. I'm trying not to make this my sermon, but I'm so excited. It's crazy. Next slide, please. 
So they organized these tables by boys and girls and by ages. So like you'd have girls uh, three to five, uh, girls six to probably eight, et cetera, et cetera. So these are, I walked through there this year and I watched family shop. And by the way, when you do that, if you don't cry, you don't have a soul. Because I cry every year. Because these are, let's go to the next slide and see if we can find some of these gifts. So you're getting a scope of how big this is. Next up, real games. Like real, these are not Dollar Tree items. That's my point. These are not from Walgreens and Dollar Tree. Keep going. I'm walking around looking at these tables. Now, I don't know if you can see this very well, but there are scooters and Tony Hawk skateboards. And there is a whole kit for meteorologists and remote control toys. And this is boys like six to eight. And I'm thinking, this stinks, man. When I was six to eight years old, I had a slinky and silly buddy. This <laughs> is just not fair, right? I'm, I'm like pulling comic strips with my silly buddy. This is so cool. These guys are getting Tony Hawk skateboard. I mean, these are top shelf items. Here's what's really cool. Families walk in, parents walk in, kids can't come. Next picture. So parents walk in and they have this list and they say, okay, we have kids from this age, this age. They get their own personal shopper that's an elf. So yes, we hand them off to genuine elves. And they have this basket that they're pulling with them and another shopper who's filling up the basket. And as they walk up to every table, they say, which gift would your daughter like? So they're not just handing them a toy. They're selecting from these toys. It's just amazing how this works. Next picture. I want to give you a scope of, so those are the tables. Next picture. One more. One more. I couldn't stop taking pictures, man. Okay, so you get a shopper and an elf. Okay, the elf helps you select your gifts. The shopper pulls this wagon. Are you seeing this? Those are full-size, 50-gallon construction, three-mil trash bags. Wow. And the only reason they use those, by the way, is so that when you take your gifts home, your kids can't see what's in the bag. Right. They have thought out every detail of this thing. And I, I, I'm telling you, they're killing it. Nobody does this better than what I've seen. Why am I telling you all this? Two reasons. Number one, at the end of three days, Christian Help, with partners like us and corporate partners and other churches, provided gifts for 240 families in the Central Florida area. Yeah. Now you say, hey, that's pretty cool. No, that's 800 kids. That is 800 kids got bags of gifts to take home. And you had a part in that, so can you give yourself a hand? Amen. Now, the other reason I'm telling you guys is because next year we're volunteering as a church. We're going to have shirts, we're going to show up for a shift, and we as a church are going to descend upon this place, yeah, and we're going to be yeah. greeters and prayers and elves, because some of you are going to make marvelous looking elves, <laughs> and we're going to handle toys, and we're going to pack people up, and we as a church are going to represent the storehouse yeah. next year. So if that sounds like a good idea, say no. All right, let's get out of the word this morning. So you're ready to receive the word? We started. By the way, kids, you're dismissed. I know you got stuff to do. They're still putting the gifts together for the uh, uh, assisted living facility, so you're free to go. All right, so focus back up here. Hello. After we watch Destiny walk out. Bye, Destiny. <laughs> Bye, buddy. I hope you find your dad. That's funny right there. So I was at the at Christian Help. I was a prayer guy. I, I run the prayer team for the church, and the, the clients come through us first, and we pray for them. And my whole spiel is to make them feel really good. Is to say, hey, look, you ready to go shopping? And they'll say, yeah. And I'll say, well, come with me because I'm going to introduce you. We have the world's greatest elves. As a matter of fact, they are genuine elves. And people are like, I'm like, no, they're so genuine. I'm pretty sure they had spaghetti and maple syrup for breakfast. <laughs> and like, nobody got that joke. Y'all need to go home and watch the movie Elf, because he eats spaghetti and maple syrup for breakfast. And it's totally funny, and nobody got it, and I felt very dejected, and I needed a bag of toys. <laughs> Last week, we started a three-part Christmas series in, uh, called, let's put my slide up here, because I need my remembrance, Christmas. See if you can relate to this. How many of your Christmas seems to be just a bit chaotic? Maybe some inconvenience and certainly some disruptions in your life over Christmas. If that's you, say amen. 
If that's not you, then congratulations, you are a Hallmark movie. Amen. But I don't think most of us have a Hallmark Christmas. So last week we talked about Mary and we learned her story. And imagine Mary is a 13 or 14 year old girl. The angel visits her and says, hey Mary, how are you? Oh, I don't know, I'm scared, you're an angel. And the angel says, look, don't fear. I want you to know that the Lord has given you favor and at 13 or 14 years old, guess what? You're gonna have a child. Right, right? I'm like, what? I don't think so. And the angel says, but don't worry about this because it's all ordained by God and the Father is going to be God himself and you're going to be impregnated by the Holy Spirit. And we just looked at what a marvel Mary's life was. She walked in obedience to the Lord in a life that was certainly disrupted by an unplanned, unforeseen pregnancy. This morning I want to go another different direction and I want to look at Joseph for just a few minutes. I want you to think about this. Picture your typical nativity scene that you've seen in your mind years and years, maybe at a church or maybe in a play. And the typical nativity scene looks like this. There's, of course, baby Jesus in the manger. In the manger. And next to him is Mary. And, and, and with Mary, there's some angels probably in the background. And next to that, on the ground, there's some shepherds and probably some barnyard or farm animals. Maybe the wise men are there, which is really inaccurate historically because the wise men didn't show up till he was like two or three years old. But we throw them in the scene anyway. <laughs> One little boy from southern Georgia was in Sunday school class, and he gets home, and he shows his dad. He says, Dad, I drew a picture of the manger scene. And he said, well, let me see it, son. And he looks at it and says, well, son, this is great, but why are these three guys? And why are the firemen here? He says, Daddy, those aren't firemen. Those are the wise men. And he says, why are they dressed like that? He says, because the Bible says they came from afar. <laughs> I was so hoping I could throw that in today. <laughs> so that's the typical scene, and the, the wise men are there. And, and standing in silence is Joseph. Can I tell you something, Simone, that you may not know? We never hear a word from Joseph in the entire Bible. Joseph stands in silence in this whole event. But you know what? I've heard it said that actions speak louder than words. And if that's the case, then Joseph is shouting volumes. Let's look at the scriptures this morning. Matthew tells us this. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Remember those words. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off the engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream, and he said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Isn't it interesting that angels always appear, and at some point they have to tell us, fear not. <laughs> which means they're bringing crazy news, and oh, by the way, they're angels, which in and of itself would be a bit intimidating. He says, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived. By the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. because he will save his people from their sins. Say, Hallelujah! Amen. Now, all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. The prophet said, Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as an angel from God commanded. And he took Mary as his wife. But he didn't have, you know, with her. <laughs> Gotta keep it G rated here. Until she gave birth to a son. And Joseph called him Jesus. I love this part of the Christmas story because I think of all the characters involved in the birth of the Savior, Joseph just doesn't 
get much credit. But I want to say one thing that's just out of my, not in my notes and totally off script, but let me point this out to you very quickly. Joseph was the exceptional stepfather. So stepdads, if you're here this morning, I want to encourage you. And I want to say thank you from your family and from myself. Because sometimes we are in blended families and we receive and bring children in, but receive them graciously. Children that are not our own and you've stepped up and you've served as role models and guides and teachers and discipliners. That's a word. Disciplinarians, spankers. Oh, you can't spank anymore, Pastor. That's what's wrong with society. Yeah, amen. They need a good flip-flop. <laughs> Ours was the wooden spoon and the fly swatter. <laughs> To this day, our kids can't eat pancakes. Oh, mom's got the spoon. <laughs> no, we're just making pancakes. Calm down. It's okay. <laughs> so thank you, stepdads, for stepping in and doing what God's called you to do and being the examples that God has called you to be. Can we give them some praise? <laughs> so Joseph steps in. Now, I want you to think about this. This is kind of obvious, but remember this. Joseph doesn't find out that Mary's pregnant till after he's engaged, and oh, by the way, after she's pregnant. <laughs> this is a life totally disrupted. He had plans with Mary. They were planning a life together, and she comes to him. Imagine this conversation. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But suddenly this whole world is turned upside down. But I want you to see three applications from Joseph's life this morning, okay, that I want you to take home. Application number one, God honors righteousness. Amen. The Bible says this, but Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. That is the only description of Joseph we hear in the entire Bible. Man, if you put anything on my tombstone, I hope it's not, he really loved brownies. <laughs> I mean, you could do that and it would be appropriate. At least accurate, if nothing else. But wouldn't it be great if you recognize, oh man, Brother So and so, Pastor Eric, I'll tell you one thing I know about him. That man was not afraid to live in righteousness. What is righteousness? Here's what righteousness is very simply righteousness is this righteousness is, look at me, consistently doing the right thing. Yep. That's it. Well, Pastor, what's the right thing? Before I answer that question, let me say this. Righteousness is cultivated. It's not instantaneous. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to train your children to do the right thing. That's right. How do I know that? Raise your hand if you have kids. Amen. Raise your hand if they were ever small. Amen. Okay. The first word they know is? No. Yeah, followed by? Uh, mind. Yeah. You don't have to teach them to do wrong. They know that. Hey, get over here and say, no. Well, I'm sorry, What? You need to go through life with one leg. You know, snatch their arm right off. Your son only has one arm. I know he's disobedient. He's like a Lego. We can just keep popping him back on. <laughs> so righteousness has to be cultivated. It isn't, it isn't something we're born doing the right. Look at it. Jesus would never have to come if man was born knowing how to do the right thing. Amen? There's a whole reason for Christmas. We have a bent toward that which is wrong. So righteousness is cultivated. It doesn't happen right away. What is righteousness? Righteousness is simply doing, consistently doing what is right. Well, pastor, how do you know what's right? Truth is different for different people. Baloney. Don't buy into that lie. Something has to be the absolute truth. Yes. Let me tell you what righteousness is not. Righteousness is not. Hold on. I wrote this out. It was beautiful. I'm trying not to look at my notes. Righteousness is not doing what other people think you should do. Righteousness is not doing what other people tell you they think God is telling you to do. Can you get that one? That's a long one. And righteousness is definitely not, the right thing is not doing what you hope God tells you to do or what you want him to tell you to do. Righteousness is consistently doing what's right. Let me tell you something about being righteous and standing for what's right. Just because something is legal doesn't make it right. right. Just because something is socially acceptable doesn't make it right. 
The only thing that makes it right is one thing. That is the word of God across the board. Amen. God's word is the plumb line of truth. And it's not a buffet. You don't get to say, I like this part. I don't like that part. It's not a buffet. God's word is the plumb line for doing the right thing. Amen. We need to learn to do what's right. Say amen. That's amen. number one. God honors righteousness. Number two, real quick. God honors faithfulness. Amen. Here's what I love. The scripture says, as Joseph thought about these things. <laughs> so let me back you up here just a minute. So Joseph does the right thing. Let's go back to the right thing for just a minute. So God honors his righteousness. But God honors faithfulness. I love the scripture next that says, And while Joseph thought about, the, while he was thinking about these things, an angel appeared. And I love that phrase while he was thinking about these things because many scriptures say, while he pondered these things. In other words, it wasn't just like, hmm, okay. No, it was turmoil. Yeah. Can you imagine what's going on? Yeah. Dave, his 13-year-old fiance has just said, honey, <laughs> dear, you know I love you. <laughs> Two words you never want to hear from your spouse. You know I love you, followed by, we need to talk. <laughs> and you know Joseph could have very easily managed this situation according to the law and been absolutely in the right he could have simply sent Mary away in a very public divorce but here's the problem with that he would have exposed Mary to some very harsh and very real consequences at a minimum she would have been rejected by her family at, a, at another level, she would have been rejected by society. Quite possibly, she could have been uh, stoned to death for adultery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And if nothing else, think about this. Quite possibly, she could have been stoned to death for blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because imagine this conversation. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mary. You're what? And the father is who? Well, guys, it's going to be okay because the Father is God. No, that's blasphemous. So while Joseph is wrestling with all of this, and the Bible, some versions say, and while he pondered these things in his heart, that means that deep down inside, he's in emotional turmoil. He's thinking about these things night after. This wasn't just a five-minute thing going like, okay, it's going to be okay. No, he is just wrestling with this thing. And while he's wrestling with this, what happens? The angel of the Lord shows up to him and lays out God's plan. Can you say amen? amen. So look, I don't know what you might be wrestling through today. Maybe there's issues in your life and turmoil in your emotions and your spirit. But may I say to you today, God has a plan. He has not forgotten you. Say amen. amen. Matter of fact, let me be so bold to say this. Not only does God have a plan and he sees your turmoil, but he may very well have orchestrated the very circumstance you're in for his glory. Say amen. amen. Remember the story of a small boy there. The uh, parent's house caught fire, and the boy was in the bedroom on the second floor. And in order for him to get out, he had to crawl out onto the roof. And his father is in the front yard, and his father saying, Son, I need you to just jump. I'll catch you. And the son's like, There's no way I'm jumping, Dad. And he says, Son, just I will catch you. And the son said, Dad, it's so smoky here. I can't even see you. And the father says this, But I can see you. Right. And that's all that matters. May I encourage you today to say that God sees where you are, exactly where you are, and that's really all that matters. And we need to operate in faith. That what we're going through today, while it is chaotic, while it is certainly perhaps inconvenient, and while it is a divine disruption, God sees you and he's here with you. Third point this morning, third application. Say amen. amen. Thirdly, God honors obedience. Listen, so the angel comes, he lays out this plan to Joseph. He says, Joseph, don't put Mary away. He said, this is all of God. The baby's conceived of the Holy Spirit. Because you, guess what? Get to be the stepfather of the Messiah. Yeah. But you know what? Joseph still had to make a decision. He still had to decide whether or not he was going to be obedient. See, here's the, here's the challenge in many believers' lives today in churches today. Many of us know God's plan, which comes to us through the word of God, say amen, amen, but we choose not to follow that plan. We have to choose to be obedient. 
We have to choose. Here's what I love about the Bible. You know the Bible always puts faith and obedience together. You can't have one without the other. I can't walk in obedience unless I have some faith in God. I can't walk in faith unless I'm willing to be obedient to his word. But here's the problem. Many believers read the word and we say, well, okay. What does James say? James says if you look at the Bible and examine yourself and you walk away without changing yourself or allowing the Holy Spirit to change you, you have accomplished nothing. I'm getting to the age where all of the numbers in my little black book end in some form of MD. <laughs> So now I have a pill for almost everything. And here's the thing. The doctor can prescribe something for, you know, pick whatever your ailment is. Um, I'm going to go by HIPAA and not tell you mine. Um, hair loss. No. <laughs> if I'm prescribed medication and I take that medication home and I stick it in my cabinet and I never take it and I go back to the doctor and say, this ain't working. <laughs> that's preposterous. But that's how we are in the word of God. We crack it open, we look at it, we don't take it, we don't allow it to sink into our spirit, and we don't decide that what's right is right, and I'm walking in righteousness and faith, and I'm going to walk in obedience, because that is when the Lord can transform your life and change your situation. Amen. Say amen. So we need to learn to walk in obedience. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Here's the thing about walking in obedience. Walking in obedience is not always the easy way. Say amen. In fact, walking in obedience very often is the most challenging way because it's counterintuitive to how we want to respond. Are you with me? Yeah. What do you mean I have to go down and dunk myself in the river seven times to get rid of leprosy? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. What do you mean you want me to walk uh, to and go see the priest as a leper? I'm not even, not even allowed to see the priest as a leper. Jesus loves giving people instructions that don't always make sense, but if followed, have miraculous results. Yes. So our obedience needs to walk in faith, and our obedience isn't always the easy way. It's sometimes the most difficult way. Yes. Say amen. amen. We're going to see this in the next scripture. Joseph has to make move in righteousness, walk in faith, and make some very um, difficult decisions that are not the easy way. Let's go to Luke chapter 2. Say, we're almost done. Good. Only one person said that. You know, never mind. Now, in those days, an order was published by Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be registered. In other words, there was a census. We're going to count everybody in the world, the known world at that time. So this was the first registration taken while Quirinius, I practiced that, was governor of Syria. So all the people went to their hometowns to be registered. Joseph, too, went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called, remember that, because he was a descendant of the household and family of David. He went there to be registered with, who had been promised to him in marriage, and was, Prego. While they were there, while they were where? There. Bethlehem. <laughs> Literally there, yes. Good. You follow instructions well. While they were where? Well, there. The Bible says they were there. While they were there, <clears throat> the time came for Mary to have her baby. And she gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a feeding trough. Because there was no place for them in the guest quarters. If you've read this story more than ten times in your life, raise your hand. So imagine preaching this. <laughs> it's like so many ways to look at this thing. And I really came before the Lord in the last month, and I thought, Lord, I really, I want, if you know your pastor, I want to immerse myself in this story. Because here's something Luke does that I think is a bit of a disservice. And I love Luke. As you know, we studied Luke as we read the book of? Acts. Good, three of you remembered. We had the book of Acts. It's only 45 weeks. <laughs> I think Luke just assumes that we know how difficult this trip is going to be. I think, this, let me tell you, let me give you the picture of what this trip looks like, okay? First off, close your eyes. You're nine and a half months pregnant. I noticed none of the guys are moaning. <laughs> okay, the equivalent would be, guys, you have a bad cold. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I have a fever and I'm just so tired. And my nose, it just won't 
quit running. I'm going to die. <laughs> All right, back here now. Stay with me. So you got to catch this because it's important, okay? So this trip, I, I, I studied the distance. It's about 90 miles from um, Nazareth to Bethlehem. Now, the average person at that time, and they're still pretty young, typically would cover 20 miles a day on foot. Say, say on foot. On foot. No Uber. No vans. Nope. Hold on. Don't get ahead of me. 20 miles a day is the average. But Mary is just slightly pregnant. So let's figure that they're doing maybe 8 miles a day. So we're looking at a journey that is, catch this, approximately 10 days long. Hold on. Before you moan. On foot. On a donkey very pregnant outside. You get in the picture? We just read this like, okay, they shuffled off to Bethlehem. Hey, we're here for the census. Oh, all right. We'll take the barn. Ta-da! Jesus is born. That's kind of how we read this. No, no, no. They've been trudging, by the way. The path from Nazareth to Bethlehem is one of the most dangerous regions in the Middle East. How do we know this? Because archaeologists have found signs, literally signs, that warn travelers, if you're going down this road, which was the edge of the forest next to the River Jordan, I believe, and the signs say, if you're going down this path, you need to be aware. There are bandits, robbers, there are, listen, lions, bears, and wild boar. The entire journey. This is not, hey, we're jumping into our Toyota van and heading down to Bethlehem, everybody. Road trip, let's stop at 7-Eleven. We need snacks. <laughs> By the way, their snacks consisted of, which they had to carry with them, because <laughs> surprise, on the way down, there's no Chick-fil-A and checkers. <laughs> no, they didn't eat locusts, but uh, good guess. Bread, oil and herbs, and probably some dried fish. Say, mmm. That's their 10-day meal. Water. There's no, space, there's no place to stop and get water, so they had to carry their own water, probably in wineskins. So they are literally self-contained for the next 10 to 12 days. They're walking on roads that are inherently so dangerous that the government has posted signs that basically said, if you're going on this road, good luck. You're on your own. We're not responsible. And then they arrive at their destiny some 11 days later, and Bethlehem is overflowing with people because of the requirement of the census. So Joseph, being a man, didn't make reservations. Imagine that conversation. Honey, I'm sorry. I just thought there would be room. I know. No, I know you're not okay with this. Stop telling me it's okay. It's not okay. I feel so bad. That was the first silent night. She didn't speak to him for days. <laughs> like, silent night. I don't know. I don't know if it, it wasn't holy until Christ came, but it was silent long before we got there. <laughs> so they get there, and literally, there's no room in any of the inns. Holiday Inn, Hilton, Sheraton, all of them, book solid. So listen, this is the part the Lord showed me. I never thought about this. So they're moved to a cave, which is being used as a stable. Here's what I never realized until I was thinking about this. You know who's in that stable? Most of the animals from everyone else who traveled to Bethlehem by foot and by animal. We have this picture that the stable is just empty and it's just Mary and Joseph and little Jesus and they're there. And it's like, yeah, it's a stable and it's really humble. That thing is, where did the animals go? If there's no room at the inn, all of those people brought animals to Bethlehem. All of those animals are in the cave in the stable. It stinks. Literally. It's noisy. It's damp. It's cold. It's unfriendly. 
It's hostile. It's dirty. And it's not a place you want to bring a baby into the world. Somehow they managed to clean out a feeding trough. There's probably several. They cleaned one feeding trough out and they made a bed for their son. And Jesus comes forth. It's interesting that the census calls them to Bethlehem because the word Bethlehem means city of bread. Isn't it interesting that the Christ child who would later become the bread of life is born in the city of bread? So I'm putting myself in this situation and I'm not the best traveler. Ask my wife. Please don't. <laughs> Heard that laugh? Joseph and Mary show up and if it were me, I'd be thinking, I kind of blew this. I didn't make reservations. I didn't make arrangements. This is kind of on me. And if it were me, I would be frustrated and aggravated. Or as I said earlier at the beginning of this, this would be a situation that has chaos, certainly inconvenience, and it certainly is my life, our life disrupted. And they're in this cave with these animals and the smell and the feeding trough. And in the middle of all of this, God shows up. <laughs> May I say to you this morning that whatever you're going through, in the middle of your chaos, in the middle of your um, inconvenience, in the middle of your disruption, may I say to you this morning that God hasn't forgotten you, and if you will look for him, I promise you that God will show up. He's not going to be in the grand. He's not going to be in the spectacular all the time. Sometimes he's over here in the corner, in the manger, in the stable, in a cave with all of the other animals unassumingly being born and brought to the earth as a small human born of the Virgin Mary, a young Jewish girl named Mary. Think about this. The creator of the universe shows up through a virgin teenage girl in a stable in a feeding trough to save the world. He didn't come in with trumpets blaring on a horse and waving a sword. He said, in order to save man, I must become man because only a sinful man can save, or a pure man can save sinful man from the consequences of their sins. Say amen. That's how Christmas shows up. So you say, well, pastor, Christmas is crazy. It's chaotic and it's inconvenient and it's disruptive. It is. That's how Jesus came. But in all of that, in all of that craziness, God says, look for me. I've come to you. His name, Emmanuel, means God with us. In the midst of all of your craziness, God is with you. I want to close with this scripture. And I want to ask you this morning, what do you need? What do you need in your life that's a little bit crazy, perhaps some inconvenience, and quite frankly, very disruptive? Because God gives us everything we need at the birth of his son. At the birth of his son. Isaiah writes this. For unto, says we, for unto me, a child will be born. For me, a son will be given, and the rule of the nations will be upon his shoulders. Listen to me carefully. His name will be called Wonderful, Teacher, Powerful God, the Father who lives forever, and the Prince of Peace. So my question to you this morning is, what do you need this Christmas season? Do you need a counselor? A teacher, someone to guide you through these crazy times, someone to help you make decisions, to do the right thing consistently and walk in righteousness? Do you need a powerful God who can increase your faith and give you the ability to walk in obedience to him or to move in your circumstances and situations so that he will be glorified? Because guess what? He's a powerful God. Maybe you need to understand what a father is. Some didn't have great fathers as their earthly role models. But may I say to you today, don't look at God through the template of your earthly father. Look at God as the eternal father who lives forever, who has an unflinching, undying, and eternal love 
for you. And by the way, has your best interest in mind all the time. Say amen. amen. Or maybe what you need this morning is some, you just need some peace in all this chaos, man. You feel like you're in the stable and the animals are just going. They're eating. They're pooping. It's just ridiculous. Did the pastor say poop in church? <laughs> And maybe what you need is for God to step in and be with you and be the Prince of Peace. And you say, son, daughter, I see what you're going through. Quite likely, you may have orchestrated what you're going through. But I'm also here because the word says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And Jesus goes on to tell us, my peace I give to you. So in this craziness of the holiday, do me a favor. Take some time. Set yourself down in the quiet. Find some cave somewhere, virtual, not real, and say, Father, I need to know you're with me. I need Emmanuel through this season. Can you do that? Say amen. amen. Let's pray. Father, this morning we thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your word this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you are all things to us, whatever we need this morning. If you're here this morning and you have questions or you would like some prayer or you're in a place where you know what, Pastor, I just need God to break through this morning. In all of this craziness and chaos, I need to know that God is with me and loves me this morning. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Thank you, yes. Father, we thank you this morning. Give us the assurance, Lord, and the confidence <laughs> And the affirmation that you love us enough that you've given your son for us. Be our prince of peace this morning. Be our wonderful counselor. Be our father, Lord. Be our healer this day. As we walk in righteousness and obedience, bring healing to lives this day. We praise you this morning for the gift of your son, our Savior, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Give the Lord some praise this morning. All right, real quick, we're only going to show one slide, and that is our, uh, pardon me, our text slide. So if you're a first-time guest, and I think we have some faces in here I haven't seen this morning, do me a favor, text the word new to the number on your screen. It's going to ask you a couple questions. That's simply so that we can follow up and say hello. We love having you this morning and see if there's any way we can serve you today. So if you would do that, that would be great. The rest of the announcements, we're going to just roll on the slides because you've seen them. If you would stand with me, we're going to take up offering as we dismiss this morning. I want to say thank you again for all you've done to help so many families across our county and across Central Florida. There's four ways to give. You can tie envelopes or in the seats. You can use the app on your phone. You can go to the church website, which is thestorehouse.church. You can text GIVE to the number on the screen. If you're watching us live stream, God bless you. Thank you for our virtual family. We love having you on board. Leave us a note. Just say hi. Let us know where you're watching from and how many of you are in your watch party. If you would do that, we would love it this morning. I'm going to ask and put my friend on the spot. Jonathan, would you mind coming up and closing us out in prayer? Afterwards, we're dismissed. Go next door. Let's have some fellowship and spend some time together rejoicing in the Lord. Say amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning. Mm -hmm. We just enjoy your presence. Mm -hmm. And we just ask that it would just leave these walls with us that we can go throughout our week uh, celebrating, rejoicing, and praising for everything you have done for us. Lord, we give you today, and we love you, Abba yes. Father. Amen, amen. 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 amen.